ki khubor ka bate si tv rakhe ka frank yamaha khatn reus nam ya ka jing shakri ka jongka ban an ice ngu bha sha baro ki nong thi thuk thuk ringkat ka kabuk ser ban long ki nong job ya santali ki laptop kani ka offer kan kot ha ka live ho tari unai lur r hajar r phusao ka kin hul mintri jong ka sor ka jela ha ka santri unai lur r hajar phusao klawan ra ka tu kani ki jing pen ka la ya ki rule jong ka exercise Hakat jing kiran bak kilat patai kubor hen balawai ke jing alang jing kekin hul menteri um menteri rang bak ke jelau kon rak ke sang ma uli tuh bak kerul bening kong bala pen kela bagi kendon balawan rak bujli kelong halo ke komposit laisen ke jing wan rak ikan ke jing pen kela kelong nomor ke jing mi jing five star hotel hakat jela ke bala benang mi shu shu hakis nam ke ban sawan the fourth and the fifth agenda was to bring up certain changes and certain rules of the excise department uh, without going into the technicalities i will just briefly explain what these rules are uh, the first uh, rule that we have changed and provisions that we have brought in is uh, for the concept of what we call a composite license uh, this is being done in view of the different hotels and uh, especially the five star hotels that have come up and that are going to come up in the future uh, to give it a more structured uh, uh, structured uh, system uh, earlier the licenses that were given to the different uh, hotels were based on the restaurant or the bars which means that if a particular hotel had four bars or four restaurants uh, then they would have to take four different licenses for each of these different um, restaurants or bars if they wanted to serve license so the idea is to give one composite license to the entire entity so that they don't have to apply for separate licenses uh, and obviously the charges for these are going to be higher compared to the normal bar licenses and uh, that is the amendment that was proposed today by the excise department and we have cleared that and so the uh, proposal for composite license uh, for hotels uh, has been cleared today by the cabinet uh, also we have cleared the proposal uh, by the excise department to have a qr code based tracking system for the different uh, products being sold by the excise department uh, which basically in uh, simple terms means that every bottle that is going to be sold in meghalaya is going to have a qr code tracking uh, um, uh, QR code on it. Uh, this will help us to to track uh, the uh, you know the entire uh, journey or whatever you call it of the bottle, so that we know exactly where it had, um, which shop it was supposed to be sold. If there is any leakage in the system, so we'll be able to track uh, this entire system, and we are expecting that this will have anything between five percent to ten percent of impact on the overall revenue. Uh, and the leakage that we are uh, seeing in today's uh, system will be plugged by the use of uh, the QR code technology. And this is one thing that we have been wanting to implement in the excise department. Uh, and we are happy that today this has been cleared by and approved by the cabinet. And, uh, you know, we'll take this forward. So that was the fourth, uh, fifth agenda that was taken up. Yeah, so basically uh, what happens is that, um, you know, we're not saying that, uh, uh, you know, or blaming anybody here, but obviously in a system that is uh, so large, uh, you know, we need a proper monitoring mechanism. Uh, right now, today, if uh, a particular bottle reaches somewhere, there's no way for us to track uh, where that bottle originated or who was the retailer who was supposed to sell that or it was assigned to. And therefore, we could not track that whether that particular uh, material was meant to be in that particular location or not. Now with the QR code system that we're going to put in, uh, we will be able to actually track where this bottle originated, in which particular bond, in which particular retail shop, and how it reached that particular location where it should or should not have reached. So you can imagine now that if you find a bottle that's not meant to be where it is, then uh, or maybe sold in the black market, or being sold at night somewhere, you know, in uh, something. We will be able to actually then track back and say that, well, it's this shop that was actually giving out this black, uh, this particular. So that's how the system is going to work. So it's going to be 
we are expecting I mean, we could go wrong in the terms of numbers plus minus here and then that's why i was very broad in terms of my numbers i said anything between five percent to ten percent uh, of revenue ex uh, is expected to be increased uh, and we expect that uh, that is a kind of impact this would have it could be even far beyond that it could be even beyond 10 percent i really don't know right now until we don't do this it'll be difficult for us to but this is the ballpark figure that has been given by the department to me that we are looking at anything between 5% to 10% of uh, revenue increase uh, once we are able to implement this. Uh, it's meant to really streamline the entire process to ensure that the revenue that the state is supposed to get, that it, there should not be any leakage. Uh, whatever we have done in the past has helped us. And that's why today, you know, our revenue has gone up almost three times uh, compared to what it was in 2017. We are, uh, you know, at three times higher revenue compared to that because of the steps we took in the last five years. We are hopeful that this will again be another step forward in uh, monitoring the leakages, and we're hopeful that will that we'll be able to increase our revenue.